dynamic performance, sophisticated British style, MG Pilot Smart Speed Assist, the new standard in performance, style and safety. With so many impressive inclusions, this is value you've never seen before. The all-new MG HS, the SUV you've never seen before. Clint Steiner, welcome to Give Our Goes One-on-One, driven by MG. Mate, I understand you are living the bachelor life right now. <laughs> yeah, thanks for having me, mate. Um, no, it's come to a good time to do this one because I've got plenty of time up my sleeve um, with the, the wife and the little one over in uh, North Queensland playing in WNBL. So it's just uh, myself and the dog just trying to keep, keep him alive, I guess. How's, um, how's dad life been? Uh, your little son, Noah, I assume is probably the best thing that, that you and Caleb have ever achieved together. But um, how's, it, how's it been being a father? Yeah, it's bloody awesome, mate. Just um, even the bad times are great. It's, <laughs> he's, uh, you get, I mean, with this virus, it's, I guess the silver lining of it all was we're stuck at home for a little bit. Obviously, Western Australia has been a, a little bit more lenient, but those first few months I was just at home when he was about three, four, five months old and just watching him grow and till this day, you kind of starting to see some characteristics about him, his cheekiness and his little smirks when he, when he chucks a tantrum. It's been amazing so far. And obviously I'm missing him over the next uh, month and a bit, uh, but it's been absolutely awesome. I, I can't wait to get him to get him back here and, um, and continue to see him grow. I've seen videos of you both, you and Kayla, out walking him through the park. One of you will do a lap around the oval while the other one feeds and you keep chopping and changing. How's that been, two athletes looking after a little fella? <laughs> yeah, that was early on. Uh, probably a few weeks after the season had finished, actually, and we kind of needed to do some exercise. And so we got everyone out there, got the dog out there, we got the dog run around and <laughs> it was it was getting cranky because he was hungry so someone had to feed him someone had to run so want to do a lap we'd swap over we did that for about 10 minutes and we said oh this is enough running we'll just hang out on the ground so i'm going i'll get to kayla and what she's doing now and her basketball stuff but has it been hard with them being gone probably the first time since he's been born that you haven't kind of right uh, how's that how are you dealing with that yeah, it's definitely strange. Uh, absolutely. I miss the, the craziness around dinner time. Um, Kayla's cooking. Uh, I'm cleaning up something. We all try to sit down and eat. We feed Noah. He's throwing stuff on the floor. The dog's running around eating it all up. That's probably the only plus side about the dog. You don't have to wipe up much because he'll eat it all. Um, but it's it's been a week so far. And... Um, Obviously, I only have one set of cutlery, one plate, one cup. Clean up is way easier. Um, but like I said, I miss the craziness around dinner time. Miss, I guess, the noise of uh, Noah chasing the dog and the dog going back at him. And um, it, it's uh, it's been okay. I do miss him a lot. Um, but I reckon in a few days I'll be I'll be wanting him back pretty quickly soon. I reckon. Um, it's obviously amazing that the WNBL season is going ahead. Um, you know, the, the games in town so, and Mackay, your hometown of Mackay. But um, also amazing that Kayla's now back and you know, birth. And I know there's a bunch of other, um, you know, female athletes, basketballs that have kids there as well. But for her to get back and to be playing with the Lynx, that's pretty amazing for her to be able to do that. Absolutely. Um, Kayla was able to play state league. It got delayed over here and, uh, she went pr pretty well in, in state league. And when Perth Lynx came knocking a few times, it was, uh, at first it was, uh, I don't think so. She didn't really want to do it. Um, obviously with the border restrictions and quarantine, if she left the state and coming back, she, it'd be extremely tough to do two weeks quarantine in a hotel with, with a 10 month old. Um, so we, we thought about it for a bit and obviously she's she made the move over to play and it's pretty amazing having uh, you know almost 11 months ago now and back playing professional basketball and as you said there's a there's a couple of other girls out there uh, that are doing the same thing and it's it, it is amazing seeing what changes their body went through for 
those 10, 11 months and then the recovery and they're straight back into playing professional sports and being professional athletes. It's, no, it's definitely a testament to them. It, it is amazing. Um, so hopefully they can um, get some games going. They've, uh, they've got a young team, get some wins on the board. But um, obviously my family and over there, Kayla's sister uh, being over there, there's a lot of support system there for her. And everyone gets to see Noah and that's all they want. <laughs> I was about to ask, um, obviously they're playing in your hometown of Mackay. So I, I was going to ask, you know, what's the setup for them? Obviously with your family there, she's lucky. Do you know with the other girls that have babies there, what their setup is? Is it just an in, in-house club thing where they, they bring family to look after the babies during the games? Or obviously it's lucky for you guys, you, your family and whatever, get to see Noah. But um, how's that all work with the girls and their, and their kids? Yeah, well, I mean, I, I can't really speak for for any of the other girls because um, I don't know what their situation is. Um, but with Kayla, obviously being so lucky with my pretty much all my family up there uh, and Kayla's sister, it's pretty much Kayla needs to go to practice and she's essentially set out a roster of, okay, <laughs> who's got him this day at what time? And there's always these little changeovers going on between um, her sister, my parents, my aunties, um, it's uh, she's got it all under control i'm calling up at different times trying to figure out who's with him who's taking him for walks so uh, from all reports they're absolutely loving they say easiest child going around he's so happy he's never cranky um so no we're just very lucky that um we have so so much family up there um wanting to support uh, myself and kayla um with our basketball careers that they're just jumping at the opportunity to uh to hang out with the little guy i watched on um, the wings play last night kayla hit a you know a few three balls and obviously that runs in the family you both like to shoot the three do you guys ever you know work out together in perth um, i'm assuming you probably go and train together or train with each other and rebound for each other i'm assuming it probably gets a little bit competitive at times with you know shooting comps and, and whatnot do you, do you guys have a little bit of fun with that um you know when you go and work out uh, I guess earlier on in the relationship, uh, we did it a little bit. Um, right now, I just get frustrated. If we did it now, I'd probably, we both just get frustrated with each other. I, like she throws terrible passes, so you can never get a clean pass into a shot. And when we go into the into the post, I don't stand a chance. She's, she just overpowers me down there. So with her fadeaways and whatever else she's got. So now early on, we, uh, we had a bit of fun with it. Um, but... No, she's, she's definitely still got it, that's for sure. And um, I guess as these few games go on, uh, she'll get start to get a little bit of rhythm back. And, uh, yeah, you'll continue to see her shoot those three balls. How good is it, obviously, uh, with no NBA, no football now, both codes, just to have live sport and for everyone to be able to watch. I know you're a big supporter of the WNBL with her and in the past as well, but just to be able to watch live basketball again, with so many games in such a short amount of time, it's I'm loving being able to watch these games on TV. Absolutely. And, I mean, apart from, I guess, the, the Women's Big Bash League that's also going on, that, yeah, they're really the only, I'd think, the only two professional sporting leagues that are on right now. And it's such a, a massive opportunity for WNBL. And uh, also with no imports, these young girls getting a crack at it and being able to show what they can do. And it's, it's really good exposure for the league, for the players. Um, so just to have basketball back on TV again from, I guess, um, a basketball player's point of view, it's good to see. Um, hopefully it continues to run smoothly because I guess it gives us uh, a sense of opportunity that when it comes uh, time for the NBL to get going, we can take some notes from what the WNBL has done to, to get it going. And, Hopefully we can do that too. But yeah, it, it's great to see them out there. It's great to have basketball back on TV, that's for sure. And you're right, there's certainly some young talent coming through. I've been mean, watching a lot of the games, but there's some young start, like 18, 17, 18 year olds that are just playing phenomenal basketball. Now you went to uh, the AS like a lot of us. Um, you chose to go to college. Was um, going straight to the NBL an option or why did you choose college? Was it because there was 48 other guys at St. Mary's and it was like an Aussie, <laughs> Aussie homecoming or you know why did you choose to go to college yeah it's always something I wanted to do um I guess ever since I got the going into grade 12 and you start to hear about college and then I went to the to the AIS and 
um, you learn more about, I guess, the college system. Um, from what I remember, I don't think I had uh, many looks to go straight from high school into the NBL. Though I don't think there was that opportunity there. Um, so my sights were set on college and um, I visited a couple, uh, St. Mary's, University of Hawaii and um, University of Colorado. Um, and yeah, obviously picked St. Mary's and I mean, it, such an amazing experience just to experience college and uh, I guess the hype in America around college basketball and when you play against those big teams you go on the road to Gonzaga you play in a sweet 16 uh, against Baylor um, you look back on those memories and you think wow we played against some pretty good teams with some absolutely gun players um, that are NBA all-stars right now so it was such an amazing experience and um, I think that all came about was was through the AIS, through Marty Clark, Paul Goris. So, uh, no, those guys definitely helped me along my way there. And uh, you say, you, know, you just mentioned college in America. It's such a, a big sport. Um, it must have been cool to know that, like, that St. Mary's event, like the, the school and whatever, it kind of became like an Aussie fortress. Like, you, I remember watching games, you see the, the flags and the anthems and stuff. Like, that must have been cool to, to kind of be a part of that and lead that tradition. And um, a lot of Aussies have been through there. But to have that, you know, kind of Aussie feel with a big, you know, kind of college school must have been cool as well. Absolutely. Um, I guess going over there, you, um, you have to em embrace, I guess, the culture, what they do, um, to, I guess, fit in as best you can, learn some things. And then um, when you do that, and I guess your students at the school, they start to embrace you. Yeah. And it just creates an environment where you go to class and everyone's coming up to you asking about hoops and they want to talk about the game. and. Um, being St. Mary's being a, a small college, you couldn't really um, get around anywhere with, without anyone coming up for a chat or anything like that. So no, it was it was it was very cool. We embraced the culture there. They embraced us, and um, I think that's why so many Australians have gone over there because they've seen guys have successful uh, college careers. They've been able to go on to play professionally, whether it be the NBL, NBA with Dally and, and Patty um, or in Europe. Um, it's been, it was an amazing experience and hopefully those um, kids coming through now can see that and see, okay, there's a pathway there through St. Mary's to be able to become professional basketballers because um, even the, the guys before me set that pathway and I was able to follow that. There's definitely been a lot through there. Even guys, you know, Kick It and, and Capes obviously started it. But guys like, you know, Steve Holt, who's played in the NBL, yep. played in Europe. I consider him an Aussie now, great mate. But so many players, I'll play, I swear every year I'm going to pre-season, there's like three guys that have been at St. Mary's and they're shooting groups together. And I'm like, Kick It's one of the worst. But um, <laughs> from there you went from there you went to the NBL and Cairns. It was, um, you know, why Cairns? There's, uh, Fernie was great with, you know, a lot of, college players whether that's the connection he has there but you know bringing a lot of college students and developing them um you know why why did you choose cans um as a first kind of first kind of stop yeah i guess essentially that one came down to from what i remember was cans or adelaide i believe uh, marty clark was coaching adelaide then and um i guess spending four years in the u.s and then coming back um, to Australia, um, Cairns being eight hours up the road from from home, and um, there wasn't too many times where my parents actually got to see me play in the US. I was lucky enough to have them make the trip out a couple times to see a few games, but um, to be able to start my professional career in Queensland, have mum and dad down the road, they can come up and, and watch those games. Um, that was probably a big big influence on on going to Cairns and um, I get myself and Kemi Glidden started his career there. So that was another good one. Um, so we both started our careers in Cairns and um, been able to stick around uh, a few more years now. And obviously Cairns at Southeast Melbourne with yourself. So um, no, I think it was, it was a good place to start. And um, obviously then have moved on to 
uh, a few more teams, a um, bit of a stint in Europe, which I enjoyed and now found a home at the Cats, which um, myself and, and Kayla absolutely love. I'll get to your other teams in a minute. Do you remember like your first experiences in Cairns? Obviously you're going from college and playing against, not, not kids, but you're obviously younger and professionals are a lot different, probably a lot more physical. Do you remember anything that kind of stood out? Anyone you learned off? Um, any of the older guys in Cairns that you kind of remember helping you through? Like whether it was being a professional, how to train, um, how to get your body right, anything that kind of comes to mind with that, that first kind of pro year? <laughs> Yeah, don't run into Aaron Grabeau. <laughs> uh, that guy was a machine. He, uh, it, so he was a really good teammate, great guy. Um, but yeah, he, that was, I guess, when I found out the physicality of, of coming to the NBL was uh, matching up against that guy every practice because it, it was one, one strong unit for his side. So um, definitely could shoot the ball. So... Now, a lot of um, um, the things I learned were trying to follow sort of, um, I guess, line that uh, Grabo had set. And obviously, Jamar Wilson, he was uh, another um, uh, our import point guard. And so he kind of took me under his wing a little bit, showed me a few things. So obviously, he was uh, had played around the place for a few years. So he was a good, another good one to... Uh, um, to keep in touch with and 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 follow follow his lead. So, uh, but then uh, I remember a preseason game. Um, I was play- we were playing against New Zealand, I think, and matching up against CJ Bruton. And um, yeah, it's like oh, yeah, I was watching that guy when when he played at the Bullets when you were with the Bullets when you were younger. And no, it was just it felt uh, it felt different. Like college, you play around with against guys who are similar to your age, but you get in the professional league, you can range from 18 year olds to 36, 37 year olds. And then you see how different guys operate, um, how they work out, how they practice, how they prepare their bodies. And obviously everyone's different, different stages of their career. So not everyone's going to be going two hours on court. And you just kind of learn different perspectives on how each guy does things uh, uh, throughout the day to stay ready for, for a game day. You probably learn yourself, you know, the older you get, you, you kind of train and you get what you need. Like when you're younger, obviously you can run around and probably need to spend three hours on court. When you're a bit older, guys like CJ Asgrabo, when he was older, like you don't need to spend, you get, you're working in small amounts of time to look after your body. And sometimes that's better for you than shooting a thousand shots. Sometimes it's better to look after your body and rest. And I'm sure you mentioned two great pros. Jamar's still playing, I think, over in um, Poland He's- or somewhere. Finland right now, so... Finland, like, still yeah. killing it, still, you know, doing... And as played for, I don't know, have, like, a long time and such a tough competitor. So to learn off those guys at such a young age, that would have been a perfect way to start your career. Yeah, it definitely was. And uh, obviously, also, with, with Fernie there and being able to develop some talent and, and um, help you along your way, knowing that if you put the work in, then you you might be able to stick around and have a successful NBL career. And uh, although you may not have, I guess, like myself, I, I didn't play a whole lot that first year, but um, I guess it was kind of sticking to the process, continue learning, continue developing, adding things to your game. And um, I guess once you hit that 30, 31 uh, years of age mark, you, you kind of got all your tools there. Obviously you can, uh, teach them some new tricks along the way, but you're not going to uh, add a whole heap in. And you just keep working on it. You find out what works um, according to your role on the team that you're playing for. And if you, you stick to those things and you do them well, um, you're going to stick around. But if you can do them great, then uh, you're going to play a solid part on a, on a pretty good team. For sure. Now, you've gone from Cairns. You go to Townsville, the Reptile Rumble. What was your first game like back in Cairns with Townsville? Um, obviously, they, they had an unbelievable tradition. The games were unbelievable to watch. Um, you know, how, how, did, how did that all play out, your first kind of game back and, and playing there as, a, as a, I guess, a villain against um, your former team? Yeah, that year, that Red Tile Rumble year didn't work out too well. I think we went 0-4. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but no, definitely glad I, I made the move uh, to be coached by Sean Dennis, Mike Kelly. There was... 
uh, SD was a great shooter when he was young and we all know Mike Kelly and the things he did on the NBL court. So um, to be under the guidance of those two and I mean, I think those couple of years in Townsville, we by far had the youngest team going around. Myself, Todd Blanchfield, Mitch Norton. Um, okay. We've come together, come together now. And um, Mirko Jarek. So we were super young. We're, we're so eager to get out there. We just wanted to play. And um, there was, I'd say my second year there was uh, where I felt most comfortable. Um, I was able to add a few things to my game, become, understand how to become aggressive shooting the ball. And um, even if you miss some, you still got to continue doing your job and keep firing away. And so I think that was a, a big part under SD is establishing that aggressiveness and, and knowing that this is what I have to do to, to stick on an M NBL team and uh, be able to contribute um, to a team. You certainly had a young team that year, but I'm pretty sure your second year, I think you were most improved. I feel like at the NBL Awards, it was like your Crocs were just sweeping everything. Um, SD may have got coach of the year. Yeah. Um, you had your award. Someone else. Nick K of the year. Nick K. Someone might have been six man. Like, I feel like it was just a town to like whitewash at the awards night. But yeah, you guys had some, like you said, a young team. It looked like it was a fun team to play with. Like all young guys that all got along and just, we're so excited to see everyone kind of succeeding on any given night. Yeah, it was, it was, it was amazing. I mean, like I said, very young team, so no one really expected anything from us. Um, so we kind of just went out there and played, played pretty or fairly freely. Um, obviously, sticking to structure, um, you have to do that. But um, we had guys with a lot of talent there that we needed to show what we could do. And um, I think SD uh, did a, a heck of a job with establishing that and um, getting into us about, I know you're young, but you got to be able to compete against these experienced teams. So yeah. no, it, playing with those guys and uh, Nick, Nordo, Todd, I mean, I wish the Crocs were still around <laughs> because uh, if we, we're able to keep those pieces up there, then um, we would have been moving in the right direction. But unfortunately, uh, they folded and everyone had to find a new home, I guess. And one of the best places to play. That The crowd there used to get pop and when, when it runs and when it was packed, that was like one of the best places to play. Now, from there, you go to Perth. I think you did a preseason in Perth. You went to Europe, I think, to Greece for maybe three games and then I think you come back. So it was a bit of like here there with Perth and then obviously you settled there now I think I think maybe the off season before you may have broken your wrist playing SBL um, but then obviously it was a part of a championship and now too like Perth obviously a great place to play you said it's probably home now and just I talked to Damo um, a couple of the other guys just about the culture and you mentioned before about just playing your role like that's obviously why Perth have been so successful for so long so guy, guys come in they play their role they do what they have to and, and that's why you win games. Yeah. Yeah. If, if Damo told you that, he's hit it right on the head. I mean, that <laughs> guy knows he's been around, I don't know how many years now, but uh, he's seen a lot of things go on, especially at this club. And he's, uh, he's got the blueprint of how to win a championship. Um, yeah. Coming in, I guess, like you mentioned, came in for a preseason. Uh, wasn't sure where I was going to go after my year in Belgium and, end up going to Greece and that was a that was an experience um living in a like we talk about quarantine for two weeks in a hotel room <laughs> I feel like I was almost in quarantine in a small hotel room for about two and a half months there and I think the the thing that got me out of there was uh I asked for a massage and you know the the blue ultrasound oil gel <laughs> old mate went through a whole bottle of that on a massage <laughs> I was like, I'm out of here, see you guys. And so uh, I was lucky enough to land back in Perth and had a, I'd say it was a very rough first year in Perth. I couldn't make a shot, just no matter what I did, how hard I worked, I, I just couldn't put it all together and then broke, uh, broke my wrist in that off season. And it was essentially a, a chance to reset, just forget about everything, get your wrist right and let's let's go again. And 
I think ever since that point, um, I yeah, I haven't looked back. I've just continued getting after it. And it's, uh, it's, I'd say it's definitely paid dividends now two years uh, since breaking my wrist and two championships and, and playing a, uh, an important role on a, on a very good team behind Bryce, Tariko White. I mean, you got your MVP, your finals MVP. So trying to carve out a role behind those two guys um, was tough, but I, I've managed to find that niche and, and uh, hopefully I can continue to contribute. And obviously we lost a few leaders now with Damo uh, retiring. So uh, there's going to be some room for some guys to step up again. So uh, hopefully I can be one of those, uh, those vocal leaders out on the floor. You certainly found your niche. That's for Dan Shaw coming in and just, that, that's what I love about Perth. You know, you know, where the, you know where the ball's going. It doesn't matter. You still can't stop it. Like it's, it's a well-oiled machine. You, you just mentioned Damo. Obviously, he's moving on and still you have great other pieces there. You know, obviously, Norda will probably step up. But how do you feel someone like that shoes that's done it for so long? And you know, always know if, if shit's hitting the fan, Damo's going to come in and swoop a rebound or get a steal or get a stop and just make it a big-time play. Like how do you, how do you work um, to, I guess, you know, make up for what he's done for the last... 15 years or whatever it's been? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> the only way to replace it is to give him a phone call and say, do you want to come out of retirement, I guess. But no, uh, that, um, I'm, having spent three years with him, being able to see how he operates, that's, I guess, the only way we can, or we've been able to see and listen to him um, and his wisdom that we can try pass on to the guys, new guys coming into our team. Um, and I think, I think Nordo is going to play a massive role with that. Um, Bryce doesn't say, say a whole lot too much, but, but when he talks, you, you know, you're listening to him. Um, so there's going to be some, some changes there um, in terms of leadership. I mean, Wagstaff, he's been around almost just as long as Damo. So uh, he's got all that knowledge there and he, he shares it with us all. So he's going to play a huge part in how and how this team goes forward coming into this season. And although it's could be very disjointed with, with how everything's going, a lot of it will be taking everything in stride and, and um, I guess keep everything trying to move forward as best as possible till we get in that rhythm of, of playing games, traveling, practice, um, but there's going to be some guys there with, with a lot of knowledge that needs to be passed on to the rest of the group. You certainly have some, uh, some people you can fall back. I think Jackie, Jesse may have played longer than Damo, I reckon. And when you got, like you said, Bryce Cotton, who's impossible to guard, and yourself and Nordo, the guys you got bringing in, I'm sure you guys will be more than fine. Um, obviously, um, you and Patty have a good relationship. I think Patty might have been your wedding. Um, you were at his in Hawaii. Hawaii seems to be an unbelievable place. I know you, you guys like to to travel and sightsee and quite the touristy, jump in a van and, and drive and see all the sights of probably Perth and that. Um, you know, how much fun was it going over to Hawaii? I'm not sure if you shark dive. Do you shark dive? Uh, I did shark dive uh, at my wedding. A hell of an experience. I mean, that it was... Uh, they pushed me in first and they, you know how it goes. They have the guy in the water, they wave you in. You're not allowed to hesitate. You've got to go in straight away. As soon as old mate waved his hand, this shark just <laughs> swam right by, below the boat. And <laughs> <laughs> I just went for it. And I started just kicking and paddling. Guy come over and just grabbed me on the shoulder and said, come down. <laughs> so, I um, mean, it was... Oh. It was so exhilarating. And then once you actually calm down and had a look around, um, mate, swimming with those sharks is absolutely incredible. What a rush. Like, I swear, as soon as we just stopped and anchored the boat, this massive shark just did a lap around and my heart just dropped. I lost all, like, the rush. And I, I don't love the water. I don't love snorkeling, but that was intense, to say the least. Just getting there with the sharks and the one had a hook that was still like swimming around and it was just a crazy experience. But you also like, you know, like forests and waterfall, all that kind of stuff. You love getting out with Kayla and, and going and seeing a lot of things like that. 
Yeah, definitely. Um, we were we were scheduled to actually go back to Queensland and then over to the US, um, but with the borders, international travel being closed down, we decided to to hire a camper van with uh, with Noah. I think he would have been about three three or four months old at that stage, and we're like, yeah. okay, this is this is pretty bold. We'll see how this goes. And the first night, we we pull up to camp. We set up our camper van. Right next to us was like this family that had absolutely everything. They used to look like they've been doing it for 20 years. And I'm thinking to myself, if Noah starts screaming at like 2 a.m., then <laughs> we're gonna have to pack up a leave because otherwise they're gonna be coming after us. But no, it was it was awesome. We drove down South Margaret River, Albany. Um, yeah, essentially camped in a van for, for eight days. It was a really cool experience, something we've always wanted to do, and it was a perfect opportunity to do it. And so, um, no, we all made it out alive, and Noah was great. And so, no, it's just an experience that we can look back on, heaps of photos. So, no, we definitely enjoyed that one. Um, yeah, I guess that's our, our last uh, probably holiday uh, for a little bit. So, yeah. we got up. That's awesome. I've got some rapid fire questions for you to finish. Now, yep. bacheloring by yourself, are you cooking or are you Uber eating? Uh, cooking, haven't Uber eats yet. Um, it's, it's been very close. Uh, I think I did eggs and baked beans on toast for one meal. I just tried, I just held out as best as I could go get some uh, grocery shopping done. But I actually <laughs> cooked a whole bunch of stuff last night. I think I got past it for the next four nights, so I'm set. <laughs> Uh, was, what do you have a favorite food i uh, like steak um going through this thing of pesto chicken pasta absolutely love it at the moment yeah great choice uh favorite destination you've traveled to or place you visited um greece overseas uh favorite destination yeah uh whew. russia was cool being in moscow uh we played world uni games over there so i had a bit of downtime and uh, been to Moscow, uh, Italy a couple times. Really enjoyed Venice. Um, so no, basketball's definitely been very good to me. Being able to see the world, as you would know all about it, and it's um, yeah, love Italy. That was a, a really cool place. I just wish basketball trips allowed like a few extra days so you could actually enjoy the places you go to and you'd have to train and play every day. Like just add a few days on to the end of it so they can go on sightseeing and see a little bit more of the world when we're over there. We've traveled that far. We may as well, right? <laughs> we may as well. I mean, we're there for the experience. So, but I guess uh, uh, sometimes it comes down to just work. Do you have a favorite NBA player? Oh, I really loved uh, Steve Nash when he was with the Suns. That was probably my favorite team then. Um, these days, watching Kyle Corver, Clay Thompson shoot the ball, just the way they move, um, I'd, I'd probably study them a fair bit, yeah. Shoot a stick together, I like it. <laughs> uh, best, best player you've played with? Best player? Oh, uh, played with Patty a few years. Very, very good. Um, currently at the moment with Bryce. Yeah. Extremely good, just especially in this league. Um, no, those two would uh, would definitely be up there at the top. Toughest you've played against? Oh, uh, Kawhi Leonard, maybe. Um, yep. He, he couldn't really shoot back in college too much, so it was a little easy to go. I wouldn't want to come across him these days, that's for sure. <laughs> I would not. That massive <laughs> claw. No, thanks. Um, now, I know you'd love to play golf. I know you spend a lot of time playing golf now. Obviously, I'm assuming you're playing a lot now that you're home by yourself. But you prefer like a nice little uh, a drive off the tee or, you know, a nice putt to finish it off? No, I'm, that, I'm, I'm not too good with the drive. Um, I'm doing as best I can to keep it straight. But for some reason, it, it just wants to keep going out to the right. So, no, I'd love a... Uh, a 120 meter, 100 meter approach shot. I'm getting solid at that, so you can keep that up. I'm pretty happy with it. There's always one shot I'll keep you coming back. Now, when Noel grows up, is he going to be wearing St. Mary's or Gonzaga? Uh, St. Mary's, but he's going to play golf. <laughs> he's going to you play see golf. How much Dustin Johnson earns for the Masters. That's my retirement. I'll tell you what. If Noah doesn't have a three ball when he grows up, I'm going to be very disappointed. Two, three, Mum and Dad both wet ball from the three point line. If he doesn't have a three point shot, I'm going to be very disappointed. He's probably going to be left handed. Then we're cooked. 
Now, last one. Um, you had a little bit to do with Nelly, uh, Matty Nelson, um, as an assistant coach. Obviously, he's just been announced oh, last week as a, the head coach of the Austin Spurs, a G League team. Like, how cool is that to, for Aussies? I think Damien Cotter's an assistant coach of the Bulls, but to see, you know, some of you've been around a little bit, um, obviously a legend of Australian basketball in the NBL and whatever, but to see him doing so well now, um, over in America and just, yeah, I guess moving up in the world with the coaching coaching ranks. Yeah, it's great. Um, Nelly, he's obviously been a high-level player um, going into the coaching ranks. He's uh, just having a coach that's extremely relatable on how players think. Um, yeah. Obviously, you can get coaches that that haven't played a whole lot, but having that coach there that understands what you're going through, the pressures of it, of playing, trying to perform, keep up with everyday life. And it, just a, an unbelievable sounding board. And there's been a few guys who have used him and, and kept in touch with him because he's definitely going on to uh, some bigger and better things, like you said, being um, head coach of the Austin, Austin Spurs in that G League position. So... Um, I imagine he'll have a few years there before heading on to even bigger things. So, uh, no, I'm, I'm definitely grateful to be a part of uh, Nelly's journey and have him as an assistant coach and, and a friend. Uh, just another guy who has knowledge for the game and, and, and how he goes about it. He's, uh, it's been really cool. And then with the other guys, Daniel Cotter, going on to the Chicago Bulls. I mean, it's massive for Australian basketball see those guys coaching the best league in the world um it just goes to show that and i mean even with the olympic team the talent here in australia and, and the world's fine the world's definitely found out about it now because you see those guys moving on to those big things so hopefully we can keep that up and with all the hype around these other young guys coming through um it's just going to go to the next level with with these guys and who knows in 20 20 years, you, you could see 20, 25 Aussies in the NBA and um, it'll, it'll be a great thing for basketball in Australia. And Will Weaver as well. I forgot about Will. Obviously, just yeah. going over to Houston. So, unbelievable. The, the traction that Australian basketball, the NBL is, is gathering, like you said, especially with the Olympics coming up and, and all these guys going over coach and the connection, hopefully more young um, next stars when... COVID disappears and whatnot. It's a great time to be playing basketball in Australia, for Australia, in the NBL, and to be connected, um, I think, yeah, with the young kids coming through as well. I think the league this year is going to be one of the toughest it's probably been in a while. For sure. We just need to get back out there and, and start playing and being able to showcase it again because the world knows about it. we just got to continue to show them that um, we're still here and um, we've got some of the best athletes, best basketball players in the world competing in this league that can go on to, um, uh, to the NBA or over to some big leagues in Europe. Absolutely. Mate, I appreciate you jumping on. I know you're super busy over there playing golf and I don't know if you play online gaming or anything. I know you're studying too. You're probably studying a little bit, but I appreciate you jumping on, mate. Um, good luck to Kayla and, and her team and all the girls in the WNBL bubble. Um, it's awesome we can watch them and yeah hopefully like you said we can get into some preseason games and then start our season um, hopefully COVID free and have a, a great NBL 21 season definitely no, thank you for having me on and I'm glad I was able to do it uh, yeah it's been good just having a chat and talk to the other guys around the league who have done it uh, on this uh, podcast as well they've definitely enjoyed it and like you said hopefully we can get back to playing but uh, yeah I got a four o'clock tea time, so. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Thanks, man. I'll catch up with you soon. No worries. Cheers, giver.